together with some treated solids which could then be used on the land to enrich the soils and um, as a result you've got an endless supply of, of, of treated effluent that can be used in-house rather than involving for a pilot project for instance we could, we could actually uh, use indigenous wastewater to create the pilot project to demonstrate that we can make it rain in the desert um, there are alternatives to using a, a tanker for example um, uh, it's been demonstrated that you know the shipping containers that we get yeah, which are, are, are very inexpensive these can be lined and those can be used as anaerobic digesters and you can wrap them up as many as you like yeah uh, and again you're producing biogas which can pay for the operation and you're producing the, the effluent that the coastline so badly needs yeah okay because um if, if, if my understanding is right this can only be implemented through the coastline arrangement uh, yeah. initially in initially, initially. Yeah. yeah because there are very few coastline countries that are bothering that are I mean you have like I mentioned um you have Morocco, Tunisia and Algeria in North Africa. In sense in um, in um, Central Africa uh, it's only Mauritania, but even then it is quite far away from the coastline and then uh, some aspect of Senegal that uh, you can um, other coastlines like um, um, Burkina Faso uh, the distance between their coastline and the desert is so far so it's talking of a few thousand kilometers so how would one uh, transport the tankers to, to those areas okay we, we have um uh, desert situations in, in Ethiopia and Somalia yeah. on the other side of the on the other side and also in Namibia yeah, right, yeah, and true. Egypt yeah um, and the Middle Eastern the Middle Eastern countries but the beauty of it is is once you st once you carve out a pathway for these clouds to cross onto the land that there is a system called the Hadley cell are you familiar familiar with the Hadley cell no. this this recirculates the the hot arid air across the continent yeah so once you cross into that using the, 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 the breaching of thermal barrier, then these clouds will inevitably cross across the land and fall in central Africa. 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 So by irrigating um, and supporting the coastline of North Africa, yes, you can. we're creating a bridge or okay. a pipeline for the for the moisture to move back towards the centre of the continent. So we're actually feeding. And, and as these clouds move across the Sahara, the temperatures will drop. Yes. So if we set up a chain reaction, yes, yes. It's quite fascinating. Thank you. Um, not having uh, the only thoughts about um, um, but I want some clarifications on the few practical issues. Yes. One is or, or, or rather to further enlightenment and to make sure I'm not getting drunk. The waste water you're talking about. So that to suppose a situation that we have around here, for instance, where you have centralized so um, as opposed to many parts of Africa where um, we have what we call social waste. So so you can't really capture um, wastewater in any um, large quantities. Yeah, you, you, you know, that's all I'm saying. Yeah. Like here, where you have um, treatment center where everything is so interconnected, and then you have it doesn't it doesn't happen that way. Yeah. So I'm, I'm keen to know where the, where that source of um, wastewater will come from. Okay, yeah. the, the, the source of wastewater is the abundance that mm -hmm. we are currently dumping in the sea throughout Europe through the developed countries. Yeah. 
So we we, we have these massive wastewater treatment plants. Yeah. So we spend a fortune here in the UK yeah. making sure this water is perfectly safe to release into the into the oceans. Yeah. yeah. When that water could be perfectly safe to release onto the desert shores of North Africa. And, yeah. and, 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 and part of that, actually, yes. but then another thought came to me okay. as, as an African. And this is the kind of um, thinking that you have. So it's culturally yeah. sensitive to this. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now they are dumping their waste. Um, and yeah. I don't want to use the real waste. Yes. 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 We won't accept our wastewater because we talk. Yes. <laughs> Which oh, I, I find it was absolutely abs absurd. <laughs> 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 so I think you were speaking for the cultural. So so I posed this question to Gideon, uh, the former water commissioner for Israel, and he kindly wrote back and said, "Does Mr. Bellamy think uh, you know that that we sort our effluent out?" because we have visitors from all over the world with all varied diets, yeah, <laughs> who use our sewage system, yeah. <laughs> Does he think we have people down there sorting them out? Yeah? <laughs> Which, you know, might be fall, fall off the... You know, yeah. yeah. But, but uh, actually it's a very good point because uh, it's been addressed now, and, and probably some of this is down to myself over many years, is that most countries in, in arid regions now use their own wastewater to effectively treat uh, arid land and grow efficiently many crops and and, and great forests. In fact, uh, th there is a document on that disk that I've, I've, I've left with you about Egypt's success uh, using wastewater uh, to, to plant, plant these forests. Mm -hmm. And I, I really feel that <laughs> some of this will be down to my many conversations <laughs> with Dr. L. Dowd at the Egyptian Embassy, yeah. albeit battering my head up against the wall for most of the time. But he, uh, uh, alas, uh, Dr. L. Dowd has now passed away. Yeah. But, I mean, the, because people look at it from dump, dumping. Yeah. Yes. They, they, yeah. They, that, is the, that will be the initial reaction yeah. of most of the forests of the poor nations and the other the this industrialized nation doesn't know what to do with their waste and they are coming over here to, to dump it. But like you said, I mean if already I mean and I'm aware of that countries like Egypt are uh, using uh, I mean I went to one of the experiment sites I visited in Israel during my study talk was um, uh, a big farm plantation where they use in many ways to grow different they you know the Israelis they even went for that to to carry out the research on the fruits and vegetables and everything that is being produced from to see if there's gonna be any harmful effect in the humans yes. that continue to because if you look at it, the tomatoes and the various fruits and vegetables that are coming out of this farmland, the, you, it's amazing. Yes, yes. But they decided not to export them yet until they have carried out sufficient, which they did. And the same thing goes for, I, I visited uh, I was in Nevada in Arizona to see what they have also done with their desert. And I visited the uh, waste um, uh, treatment plant where they, as you said, huge investment is made there. And of course the man that was taking us around, in, the, uh, in that case it was turning the wastewater into potable drinking water. I could see all the people that went with me from Africa, they were so scared, but he just, he just took a glass of the river and drank it. <laughs> After taking us through the various stages of uh, <laughs> <laughs> of how, how it's giving us waste and then it could become a demonstration of clean water. Uh, and yes. And, you know, so, so yes, but uh, mm. always that psychological... Well, the, 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 uh, there's yeah. a joke that uh, here in London you're drinking someone else's toilet water <laughs> because <laughs> that is also <laughs> recycled. Yes. 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 Um, say a few things as well. Um, just like say a bit about, I mean I do share where Aki is coming from in um, as well, 
But I was just wondering, is there a way, from a funding point of view as well, to say maybe you probably should explore ways and find a way to collect with locally in a large quantity to make it happen, as opposed to getting it from the UK or wherever the case may be? They have to be much more accessible to the people in Africa to say, okay, don't we all know it's not free dumping, the waste is a problem to us, we all know that, we're yeah. trying to work our ways to do that. So maybe bring that as a sort of um, two-way solution and say, we're getting rid of the problem of waste which you have, and we're bringing the solution to you guys. So we're not sort of bringing anything external for something that you already have to say. Well, th this was the point to raise, that they've installed in a wastewater treatment plant. Right. Um, this can be as small as you like, for example, um, concrete uh, anaerobic treatment plants can be made uh, yeah. just by digging a hole and, and lining it with concrete. You pour in your waste, the end result is you get some nice clean effluent mm -hmm. out, you get the nutrients out, and uh, this, this, could, this could actually be set up on a small scale. You, okay. can, you can scale it up, you know, to, to take on the, the, the shipping containers, to, to line them with a... With a uh, uh, um, they, they have um, uh, like a, a pond liner yeah. that fits inside these, these containers. That can be made um, very, very economically uh, and literally plugged into any small community. Uh, and and uh, one, of, one of our bits of research was in uh, a sewage system in India right. where they literally had a communal toilet. Yes. Okay. I, could, I could actually build this. Yeah. Yeah. So they had a communal toilet mm -hmm. yeah, which was installed and it consists of a pipe that ran to this underground biodigester and they are now producing methane for the local people to cook on, yes? Yeah. So they're running on gas, right. they're running on their own gas and the end result is they have some nice clean effluent mm. to use for growing up. It's interesting you saying this a bit about converting stuff to methane. How many tankers would you need to sort of produce on a very large scale? amount that obviously would make economic sense to, you know, justify the, the cost implication. We have an area in Tall Bay called Brixham. Mm -hmm. we, did, we did an analysis that one tanker running mm -hmm. throughout a year, and I, I forget the exact figures now, but that one tanker could support a tropical rainforest the size of Brixham right. in, in the desert. That's if it never rained. Yes. Okay. But of course we know, yeah, that, that we, we are going to make it rain in the desert, yes? So what we're doing is supporting this, this land with the wastewater from yeah, whichever right. uh, region we, we, we decide to use, use yes? And uh, once we've supported it, the, then you, you have a natural tendency of trees to harvest fog and mist because they condense the, the water on the leaves right. and this, this condensate falls to the ground. So again, we're recycling this, this system and okay. another backup plan we have is, uh, are you familiar with uh, some fog nets? Fog nets? They're literally nets that they use to capture the, the moisture from the sea, yeah? Okay. They're very efficient. Yep, I think it's So fun. we have tanks, mm -hmm. yes, and your irrigated land with wastewater, uh, and then you plant your trees, and your trees again will recycle some of that water back to the land, or condensing on the leaves at night. But also, you can use your fog nets to capture the the, the, uh, the the distilled water from the effluent, okay. and that water could then be used for drinking. Yeah. Um, so I'm just a little bit confused. So how many tankers would you see? Think that you decide, okay, we're going to take this amount of waste to some place in Africa to start the process. So how many tankers would you be looking to to do that? We have got it down in the yeah, yeah, it's in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't really figure. It would be um, interesting to see that. So yeah, yeah. You know, we, 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 have, we have covered this, but we were talking about a, a four kilometre square strip of coastline in Andalusia in Spain. Yeah. Yes. And uh, we did, we have a cost of The tank would cost $17,000 or something? No, a tanker that's waiting to be scrapped. Right. Is currently costing their owners seventeen thousand okay. dollars a day, okay. yes, up to seventeen thousand dollars right. a day. So it wouldn't cost very much more, yeah, uh, or it would cost them considerably less mm -hmm. to have that tanker sitting at another part of you know of the world being anchored and actually bringing that tanker back into production mm -hmm. while it's awaiting to be scrapped. So you could convert one of those tankers into an anaerobic digester. And have the mango, for example, off the coast of, of, um, of, of, of um, uh, 
uh, Morocco, yeah, for example, and, and that tanker would then be uh, earning the tanker owner ten thousand dollars a day right. or eight thousand dollars a day, and saving him seventeen thousand dollars a day. Yeah, but then the question is, it's the point of thinking about how to get rid of the coup. <laughs> in a way. How to get it? It's just because it's got $17,000 worth of coup in here, and then like, you're trying to justify it for the same, the same years, that amount of money, just to help get rid of your coup for you. Yes. In a way. Yes. You know, that's what we're saying. Yes. And they're taking it to Africa, or whatever. Mm. And you could be recycling the indigenous wastewater from, you know, from the local, the local areas with, with very little effort. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that said, if there's, if, you know, like in Dubai at the moment, um, we have like four kilometres of, of road tankers mm -hmm. that have emptied these um, septic tanks, right. and they're taking it to an already um, overstretched wastewater treatment plant. Yes. So we now have a four kilometre strip of these tankers um, and literally there the are videos on YouTube that show these people driving past all of these road tankers waiting to dispose of it. So by plugging in this system, those tankers could easily be diverted to, to, to actually start another anaerobic digestive plant and supply us with the water that we need. When, when yeah, you, I'll, 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 I'll get you those in a moment. Okay, all right. Um, right. But if I also just want uh, to say, you know, on, on the subject of, you know, the, the cycling, um, of, I don't know if I've got it here. Yeah. Okay, so, um, you're saying that you, you, you're quite right that there are a number of cycles involved. As you know, you've got the local cycles mm -hmm. where where the, the nutrients you know, and the water and the organic material uh, from the land need to be returned to the land locally. So you've got the local cycle. Um, and of course then you've got the, uh, the, the coastal erosion cycle where you know, when you get rain then you can actually get the, the leaching of you know, the trace nutrients into the sea. one-way um, transfer of water, yeah, virtual water, nutrients and organic material from the food exporters to the food importers who then dump it. Yeah? And actually those, those ingredients in a finite world they do need to actually somehow get back to their source for that, uh, you know, well, for, for that trade to be sustainable and indeed for the life to be sustainable at the exporting end. And so, 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 so using the tankers to return you know, the nutrients with the organic material in the water to, to their source is in fact a, you know, it's a necessary part of the picture. Because so you, you do have these other cycles, well, you've got the local cycle, which you do need to <coughs> restore you know, and maintain, but we've also got the international one. Oh, right. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think. Oh, no, 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 Nigeria to uh, the United Kingdom, you have in effect transported not only that ton of rice, but all the water it took to grow that rice to a country that has no water shortage. Yeah. So by return, restoring that loop, that water can then go back to complete the cycle. So you, the, the water that you're, you're exporting from lands with an inherent lack of water to a land that's got plenty of water, that water could then complete the loop and, and be returned back to, to actually restore the dam. Yeah. And, and let's not let's not forget that the land that we want to restore, uh, we're not talking about someone's backyard. We're talking about you know a strip of coastline where no one wants to live. Yes. Yeah. So we're miles from any community. So we're going to create in effect an oasis in the desert, yeah. a fertile oasis in the desert. So as for dumping it in someone's backyard, our plan uh, doesn't come anywhere 
close to America's plan to, to dump uh, nuclear waste yeah, and missiles yeah, in, yeah, in, yeah. in the middle of the desert. What we're trying to do is actually restore the forest rather than you know, and restore the desert. But incidentally, you know, it does actually missile that, doesn't it? Yeah. Thing. But, but so, you know, th- th- this process of you know, actually closing this international loop, you know, that, again, that's something that uh, Europe actually does subscribe to, you know, because we've got, uh, you know, do you know Professor Michael Braungart? He, he's the founder of the Europe-wide, um, called the Sea to Sea Network, the Cradle to Cradle Network, to ensure that, you know, natural resources and process resources are used um, cyclically rather than, you know, consume and dump, as we do at the moment. You know, he's actually, you know, put his name to our manifesto, saying that all, you know, the international loop needs to be closed as well. Yeah. You know, so I'm saying. So, so if we start thinking in those terms, then we can actually begin to also galvanise, you know, the, the support of, of people in Europe. Oh, no, I'm going to pass that to you. I've actually got your figure as well. Yeah, the, the one BLCC tanker uh, will support 76 hectares of nutrients and water the full forestry in the first year. Sorry, okay. so, yeah, yeah, one, you know, one, one BLCC tanker mm-hmm. will support 76 hectares of, of, of uh, reclaimed desert with nutrients and water. It's just one trip. Yeah, one, one tanker, one trip. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Do you, what, 76? See, the one you did in macro, how big was it? With this area? Oh. Uh, I mean, the whole community is, uh, we haven't measured the social project of the project. Right. 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 What this process will do would be to kickstart it. As a pilot project? Yes. Yeah. 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 I said earlier uh, that if we can, uh, because that is what the communities want to see. Fortunately enough, people are getting fairly educated and moving away from this whole mm. melancholy of where earlier yeah, they've come to dump with the other. Yes. Because they can't dump it in their country. People are gradually moving away from it, but not as much, not as fast as you would expect. Mm-hmm. Uh, but one can still find a few countries that, that can. And once you use that as a pilot project, that's like what I said earlier, mm-hmm. it's going to be a lot easier to have it now conducted, conducted in a massive scale. Uh, because what we are talking about is this, which is another angle, is people have now come to realize that there is a scale of and, and they have gotten so desperate that they will accept anything that will bring back their present here. Mm-hmm. They, they will accept anything that will give them their father. They will accept anything that will bring them water because in some of these areas, they used to drill what you call the hand well, yes. oh, yeah. which I have. The singing wells. That's yes. right, yes. yes. And then 30, 40, 50 meters, they will get water. And now you have to go along and feed it to In some of the locations. So these are some of the realities that are beginning to what they do when they start with the so, um, it, it, it is important I mean, for us to explain it to ourselves so that we will have a clean place. Then the next thing will be how to be able to move. Although, okay, I mean, I'm not trying to move away from the Akiya, I don't know if you can have some little yeah, bit of more. Issues. No, but I mean, mine is on a more practical level now. Yeah, um, I'm just wanting to see um, two things first of all, because I'm very much interested in um, us going forward um, with the joined up approach, kind of. Yes. Because I can see the synergy in what we are all trying to do individually. Yes. Um, but 
from my own, from where I come from, and then only here, which is around fundraising and how we, like, how we can make things happen mm. practically. Yes. But I do think that I get that from your um, presentation, really, um, which is one focus on more thing that I think that would be very actually more. I just did mention that advocacy and education. Yes. And how do you uh, get the wider international community to Okay, so just to say on that one at the moment, we, we are actually just putting together a, um, an application for the European Union uh, for a communications project, okay. you know, to broadcast the message and um, indeed to, you know, to, to lay the path towards uh, attract, you know, obtaining the funding yeah. to do the pilot. You know, that, that's, that's a, a solid step that we don't actually put I'm together that application at the moment. Michael Craig, he is the head of um, your, um, your Union um, delegate in Nigeria. He, he heads the European and he runs the office in, uh, in Abuja. Oh, really? he, he was very interested in this project. So he asked me, he invited about a dozen ambassadors from the European Union for me to make a presentation, which I did. He was so very well received that he extended mm -hmm. the uh, and got the German ambassador to host a dinner in his house. Mm -hmm. We have correspondence with that, where they now extended to 30 ambassadors from not just EU now, but from the American ambassador that was there, the Japanese ambassador was there, the Mexican ambassador was there, the Brazilian ambassador. So they and they were all very, I have correspondence from most of the ambassadors because they asked for copies of the uh, So just to add, so, mm -hmm. I mean, I can, I can, it would be nice if one can um, coordinate this whole, no, because if they are already, they have already been, uh, so it would be an added information if one can, you know, since you're making your application already, yeah. and they have, information. I know that by now they will be doing their report to so, the so, so, mm -hmm. so to be interested to, to, to see how they will react to such a... Uh, at the moment we are obviously looking for, for partners. Sorry, I'm, I'm no interrupting you now. We are looking for partners, you know, who will act, you know, who are hosting conferences, you know, where we can deliver the message. Okay. And, and people who would be, you know, co-applicants with us, you know, yeah. because you okay. know, the more people that are involved, the more people that are involved, then the more um, you know, credible um, and more, yeah, uh, more uh, uh, the, the biggest problem we've got for yeah. us at the moment, yeah, is, uh, as, as was pointed out here, not in our show, yeah, but if we have someone from Nigeria who's saying, That's right, yeah. yes, come on, if we put this on the deserts, you know, That's, uh, we're going to grow trees, exactly. and we're going to grow crops, yes.
system, which is now what I want to establish from the where there are no organizations of registered charities or not, or in the process of doing that, or, or, or whether mm -hmm. they are Okay. Okay. What are their structures? So, uh, I mean, um, the Free Data Visionary Trust, we have a, a community interest company, okay. which is That's registered, it's a legal entity, non-profit, non, non, non but I also do have a registered charity called Spread, whose, whose aim is to, um, you know, to, to spread the, the cost of ending world starvation equally among people in the, in the, you know, the, in the MEDC. I mean, um, is that still fine? Yeah, certainly got both of those things. Probably as um, okay. eligible as um, a charity. Well, that's still a risk. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I'm not sure if that's so. Yeah, I'm not sure. We, I used to run a company called um, Oasis Concerts, uh, which, which was um, a, 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 a registered company. Yeah. Um, and that was more to do with the lateral thinking that it covered all the structures. Which is another story because it, it, it's been a fascinating journey. And um, the company was related to, well, I just closed the company down, but it didn't go into the convention. It wasn't going anywhere. The focus was very much not on the, on the, on the environmental problems in those days. So um, I'm, I'm well on the way over here. I was talking to Greg and saying perhaps Operation Oasis should now become a company, um, or should it become a charity, or should it become a non-profit organisation? Well, having said that, you're a, you're a uh, you're the project director for for Freedom. Yes, I am. So you know, yes, we've got that. Well, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. That means that means yeah. that means so so the 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 Yes, Operation yeah. Oasis is a project, uh, the organisation yeah. that's between the okay. yeah. that apply to um, Craig as well? Well, I haven't defined this, what the Green Frontier is going to be. All I know is it's going to be non-profit. I don't know, what, I don't know, I haven't looked into enough whether it would be best to be uh, a charity or a, a different structure. Mm -hmm. Basically all the money is going to go to environmental restoration and poverty and information. But I'm still in the early days of setting up really. and mm -hmm. so there's, there's I talked about the this talk, like the grand projet idea, which was to use the CSP. But the other aspect is the eco and conversion idea. This is something that I'm investigating and I'm going to present at the Green Fair in London in June. And it's basically how <coughs> how to join communities in the, the global north and the global south via maybe the social network and how to then have peer-to-peer -peer community community funding. For example, in, in Britain we've got a lot of transition towns and transition initiatives. Yeah. Heard about these who are, who are trying to make their communities resilient to the climate change, people on the climate change. At the same time there's there are farmers out in the rural of Kenya who might not have done the climate change, but you can see it happening. I haven't connected with two communities. Well, I think we can, because I think if we can get communities in the north to, to trade with communities in the south, voluntary carbon credits, and empower the people in the south, I mean, you, all you would need to get out there, because I'm, I'm thinking about it, would be solar panel, uh, wireless internet connection, laptop computers. There are organisations that are trying to get out lots of communities, laptop com computers to every, every child in the world, one laptop child. If they, those people can then get onto the social network and join directly with people in the uh, global north, then people in the north can start to give it kind of voluntary carbon, pay for voluntary carbon offsets to get people in the south to plant trees that are beneficial to the local people as well. Because my wife used to work for an organisation called uh, Tree Aid, that plants trees in sub-Saharan Africa. 
When we first, when I first heard a tree, it was, I, be, I believe from how I thought the charity work that first and foremost they would, they would get the guys in the villages to plant trees that benefited them directly. So it would be trees that sort of be about, you know, from the be about fruit and leaves and jacina uh, and the moringa. But more and more, it turned out that these guys were starting to, to, to plant uh, mango for trade. And then they were starting to rely on cash. Mm -hmm. Whereas the whole kind of natural capital should have been these trees that made their communities resilient. And then once that was in place, then you could start to look at trees and trees, like shade and that. But what I would like to do, really, is You've got, you've got like women's corporate and stuff which is shared and they're all that over fair trade organisations but there's a fair trade organisation but even that takes like a lot of a lot of cash and they use the people when they're supposed to be traded but if you can get if you can get social networks and you can get people who produce the shared somewhere in the room and then they can't and you can get them to touch directly with in London, and then you can make the trip direct. Well, you just a social movement for now, being one here, is that um, that we're saying? It's just a social movement. It's not been registered. Or I haven't registered as a charity. Okay. So. We've got, we've got. I mean, I'll send you all. I'll send you the stuff on equal action convergence. What we've done. We present it. At the green no, I cheated. I've had a look on the website. Well, you kind of have to have the website. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. That's <laughs> okay. We can still send you stuff. Okay. okay. But it's not the example I gave. I mean, the convergence is also for people in the in the north to be making changes in their life as well. Mm -hmm. It's well. It, it's not. A, I don't want it to be a carbon offsetting program, so we can yeah. carry on business as usual and burn up all the oil. It was, you know, for example, with um, solar panels. You know, something that can, that can apply to Africa more than it can apply to the United Kingdom, okay. but it can still apply to the United Kingdom. But it's all about it's about the leap so that so that you know the guys don't go down in Africa don't go down the fossil fuel route right, that they don't have to do because we go through the solar age mm. and you don't have to go through the dirty age. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Even there's a couple of things there you think because uh, <coughs> Take some lunch and yeah. well, he has to call it. We can be talking in the